own needs, your family's needs, your egos, your desires is your number one priority, you are in trouble as a Muslim. Because we know in Islam the most important organ you have as a human being, as a Muslim, is your heart, your spiritual heart. And the most dangerous organ you have, the most dangerous body part you have, is your tongue. So as a Muslim, these two organs, these two body parts, you should put them on check all the time. All the time. Because the Prophet Sallallahu told us we have a muscle in our body, a little fat. It won't weigh even three kilo three grams. Maybe three pounds or something. If that is good, the rest of your life and your body will be good. If that is caught up, everything else is caught up. It's your heart. And he told us, the most thing which will lead you to Jannah, will take you to paradise, is having taqwa, piety, and having good manners. And the most act which will take you to head for you is your mouth and your private part. So we know that Allah said in the day of judgment, if Allah took you away from your grandfather and admit you to Jannah, indeed you succeeded. It's the only success a human being has that Allah will prevent you from going to hell fire. And give you Jannah, if you get it as a human being, all your after If you miss that, you miss everything. So today, inshallah, we'll talk a little bit about our tongue. Because if you ask every Muslim, any Muslim on the planet, <coughs> killing, uh, killing a human being is okay, you say, no, no, haram. Taking his money, haram. But if you ask about his honor, he doesn't care, he doesn't know. While the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in his last song, in a good, what I can tell you, he said, as a Muslim, you have to know, greetings from another Muslim is haram for you to touch and to fire with. His blood, his breath, and his honor. Now, how many times do you check if you're not touching the honor of another Muslim? How many times? Because today our tongues are free to insult anyone we meet, anyone we don't like, anyone we don't know. Even if it's not the truth, even if it's not good, we don't check facts. We just take our tongue and stick it in the honor of another Muslim. Just destroy it because we care. And you have to know your tongue will lead you to Jahannam directly. No questions asked. That's what the Prophet told us. This tongue will take you to Jahannam. If you don't control it, you are in peril. Because the Prophet said in a summary, Man yad manu li ma bayna la hayayhi wa ma bayna li ilayhi atman lahu jannah. Who will take guarantee for me that he will control his tongue and control his private part? I will take guarantee for him that he will go to Jannah. Now ask yourself, you want to go to Jannah? The prophet says, guaranteed condition. You keep your tongue away from other Muslims, especially the sisters. Because once they ask him, man after the Muslim one, man after a Muslim man. قال من سلم المسلمون من لسانه ويده. Who is the most excellent Muslim? He didn't say the person who pray and fast and do that and that. He said is the one who says God that will protect other Muslims from his tongue and from his hand. Now maybe you cannot stop everyone, you cannot hit everyone. But how about your tongue going? And the Muslim stayed from your tongue. Another human being stayed from your tongue. Because we Muslims will take it for what we're eating now that we don't care what we say. We're free to say whatever. As a Muslim, you're not free to say everything you want. Because if you say a lie, you will take yourself to a hell for it. That's what the Prophet says. 
I warn you. Stop lying. Stop lying. Because lying will lead you to disobedience and transgression. And that will lead you to hellfire. It will lead you to hellfire. That's what the Prophet said. To the point, one day a man came to the Prophet and asked him about three bad vices, three bad characters, bad ones. He said, Is there any possibility a Muslim, a Muslim can be a coward? Is there any possibility a Muslim can be a thief in your name? The person said, Is this possibility that a Muslim will be a liar? He said, No. And we know, Munafi, what is hypocrisy? A hypocrisy just because he doesn't pray. He prays. Some of them went into jihad. But Allah says in the day of judgment, he will collect all the munafiqin, all the hypocrites, and the disbelievers, they will put them at the basement of the And as a Muslim, you have to ask yourself, what is the sign of hypocrisy? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa made it clear. Islam, what our problem is, we don't ask what the Prophet said and what he did. Everything is clear. He said in a sound, authenticated hadith, the sign of the prophet is free. The sign. Even if that person prays, even if that person fasts Ramadan, even if that person claims to be a Muslim, if he has these three characters, he is a hypocrite. Doesn't matter how nice your dress is. Doesn't matter how long your beard is. Doesn't matter how much you pray. That's what the prophet said. Ayatul Munafi to Salafi. Wa in salwa. The first one is that Ibn Ahad just a tiger. If you find a human being, you as a Muslim, whenever you talk, you have to add a lie. The Prophet said you have his passport, so die of it. Clear it, because if you die with it, then fire is open. It's open. Whenever he gives a promise, he will break the promise. <coughs> It's a sign of the hypocrisy. It doesn't matter if you pray or you fast. Or you claim you are a Muslim. If you have it, you have a disease of hypocrisy. Try to heal it. <coughs> Whenever you entrust him with something, he will keep it. Now, as a Muslim, today most of us have those things. We have those characters. We don't care what we lie to. So the point you hear a Muslim lying to someone, when you ask him, he says he's not a Muslim. Or you are a Muslim. You the person who lies is a Muslim. You say the person you lie to is not a Muslim. Well, how about you? The Prophet said, if you know, whenever you say, whenever you talk, even if you say you say a lie for people to laugh, it's a lie. <coughs> so the point one day he went to the companion's house. A woman was calling her son. Hey, come, let me give you the hey, hey, come, come here. The Prophet said, you have something in your hand? He said, yes, I have a dead. He said, if you didn't have nothing there, it will consider a lie. Imagine, your own son. Most of us say, hey, hey, come here, come here, I'm busy. When you come, nothing, just for holding. It's a lie. We have to stop saying what things we don't do. Allah said, Ya Ya Nabina Amanu, Nima Takuluna Nuhu Tafamu. Oh, you say, why do you say things which you don't do? Don't. As a Muslim, you have to be aware of this problem. <coughs> we today, we want to separate our religion, like the others. You know, cannot do that. State and church cannot be separated in Islam. al ibadah sha'a'iriyya, you cannot separate from al ibadah ta'amuriyya. Your worship and the way you treat others cannot be separated. It will affect one another. So as a Muslim, you have to be the truth. Even if all your society only okay, one truth, follow that truth. The truth of Allah and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to not be just as a person. May Allah give us the iman to be the truth. To fulfill our promises. To be true Muslims. May Allah clear our heart from the heart. May Allah clear our heart from the heart. Rabbana Azza wa Jalla, Hasanat wa Mughfir Al-Aqdha, Hasanat wa Mughfir Al-Aqdha, Hasanat wa Mughfir Al-Aqdha, Rabbana Azza wa Jalla, Hasanat wa Mughfir Al-Aqdha, Hasanat wa Mughfir Al-Aqdha, Rabbana Azza wa Jalla, Hasanat wa Mughfir Al-Aqdha, Hasanat wa Mughfir Al-Aqdha, Rabbana Azza wa Jalla, Hasanat wa Mughfir Al-Aqdha, Hasanat wa Mughfir Al-Aqdha, Rabbana Azza wa Jalla, Hasanat wa Mughfir Al-Aqdha, Hasanat wa Mughfir Al-Aqdha, Rabbana Azza wa Jalla, Hasanat wa Mughfir Al-Aqdha, Hasanat wa Mughfir Al-Aqdha,